As we said in part one of this video, the first Indochina War is often overshadowed by the second Indochina War or Vietnam War, despite the fact that it was one of the bloodiest wars of the 20th century. Where we left off, the Japanese had just lost the Second World War and Ho Chi Minh had just taken Hanoi and much of Indochina and persuaded the puppet emperor Bao Dai to abdicate in what was deemed the August Revolution. Now that World War II was over, the Japanese let the Viet Minh take control of Indochina while the French and British were moved into Saigon to restore order and the Chinese occupied Hanoi. The Japanese in South Vietnam surrendered to a Franco-British task force led by Generals Philippe Leclerc and Douglas Gracie, while those in the north surrendered to some 200,000 nationalist Chinese troops under General Liu Han. Of course, both of these actions compromised Ho Chi Minh's hold on Indochina. While the French government reinstated in France, the French wanted their colony back and they were willing to fight for it. From September 1945 to March 1946, the Franco-British task force released Japanese and Vichy French POWs to help them assert control in Saigon. While they primarily fought the Viet Minh, several other Vietnamese organizations got involved fighting on both sides of this six-month war. Ultimately, the task force beat the Viet Minh back, driving them out of the city and into the countryside. Following the task force victory, General Gracie took his soldiers and left Indochina to General Leclerc and his men. On the other hand, Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of the Chinese Kuomintang or Nationalist Party, wanted to increase his influence in Vietnam, directly contesting the Viet Minh. To achieve this, he armed the Viet Quoc, a Vietnamese nationalist party modeled after the Kuomintang. According to the Red Napoleon, the Viet Quoc was a group of reactionaries plotting to rely on Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang and their rifle barrels to snatch a few crumbs. Unfortunately for the Viet Quoc, the nationalist Chinese troops withdrew from North Vietnam in February 1946 agreeing to do so if the French let go of their holdings in China, including Shanghai. Without the Chinese there to protect the Viet Quoc, the Viet Minh ate them alive, massacring thousands in what was called the Great Purge. Without the Chinese nationalists there to bother them, the French moved on to the north, landing in the port of Haiphong. Throughout 1946, fearing things would return to how they were before World War II, the Viet Minh opened up peace talks with France. These were known as the Fontainebleau Agreements, but an actual agreement was never reached as the French refused to give the Viet Minh the freedom they wanted. In November, armed clashes broke out in Haiphong and the French answered by bombarding the Vietnamese sections of the city, killing 6,000 in what became known as the Haiphong Massacre. On the 19th of December, 1946, the Viet Minh set off explosives in Hanoi's power plant, consigning the city to darkness, and then started attacking French soldiers and civilians alike. Red Napoleon's order to his 30,000 soldiers was to stand together, go into battle, destroy the invaders, and save the nation. By the 18th of February, the French had driven the Viet Minh out and the first Indochina war had begun. As with every post-World War II conflict, both the Viet Minh and the French enjoyed support from various foreign nations and internal organizations at different stages of the first Indochina war. From the get-go, the Viet Minh were advised, trained, and armed by forces of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, and even fought side by side with them at times. This relationship became even stronger after the CCP defeated the Kuomintang in the concurrent Chinese Civil War. To put the CCP's support into perspective, it shipped some 155,000 small arms, 58 million rounds of ammo, 4,600 artillery pieces, 
over a million artillery shells and much, much war material and supplies to Vietnam between 1950 and 1956. The Viet Minh also had a second Red Ally in the USSR, which provided weapons, ammunition, artillery pieces such as the Katyusha multiple rocket launchers, trucks such as the Gaz 51s, fuel, military advisors, and more. A remnant from World War II, thousands of Japanese soldiers avoided repatriation and shame at the end of the global conflict to stay in Indochina and fight for the Viet Minh. As many as 5,000 helped to train the Viet Minh during the First Indochina War, working out of military installations such as the Quang Nagai Army Academy. As for the French, they enjoyed support from the French Union, which has succeeded the French Empire, at least in name, in 1946. The French Far East Expeditionary Corps was composed of soldiers from French territories, including but not limited to Morocco, Senegal, and Tunisia, while some 325,000 Indochinese troops fought for them too, some under the former Emperor Bao Dai's Vietnamese National Army, some with the kingdoms of Cambodia and Laos, and some with other anti-Viet Minh organizations in Vietnam. Hoping to prevent the spread of communism following the CCP's victory in the Chinese Civil War in 1949, the United States quickly became one of France's biggest supporters. It provided supplies, soldiers, and naval and air assistance, and even toyed with the idea of dropping a nuke somewhere. Perhaps the US's greatest contribution was Operation Passage to Freedom, however, where they transported some 310,000 civilians and soldiers out of North Vietnam and into South Vietnam between 1954 and 1955. Returning to the early days of the war, Red Napoleon avoided a head-on confrontation with the French, resorting to guerrilla tactics instead. In October 1947, however, the French almost delivered a knockout blow. This was Operation Le, in which the French dropped 1,100 paratroopers on the city of Bac Khan, hoping to catch Ho Chi Minh with his pants down. While unsuccessful in capturing Ho Chi Minh, some 15,000 French troops entered the city as some 40,000 Viet Minh troops closed the noose on the paratroopers, and the French were able to wound or kill between 9,000 and 10,000 of them. Offensives like Operation Lay were expensive though, so France tried to achieve victory through politics instead. In March 1949, the French entered an agreement with the former Emperor Bao Dai, granting him control of Vietnam as an autonomous government within the French Union. This was called the State of Vietnam, and Ho Chi Minh saw right through it. He wanted, quote, real independence, not Bao Dai independence. That same year, the aforementioned Vietnamese National Army was created, fighting in league with the Expeditionary Corps. As we mentioned, the Chinese Communist Party won the Chinese Civil War in 1949, and this changed the whole dynamic of the First Indochina War. Now, the Viet Minh could retreat to the Chinese border to pick up vast quantities of weapons and supplies. Armed by the CCP, Red Napoleon claimed victory after victory in attacks on French garrisons in North Vietnam. One of his larger victories, he claimed, was in the Autumn Winter Border Campaign. Between the 30th of September and the 18th of October 1950, the Viet Minh wiped out some 8,000 troops of the Expeditionary Force and Vietnamese National Army, making extensive use of ambush tactics along Route Colonial 4 from Cao Bang to Lang Son. Some of the heaviest fighting took place in the first half of 1951. Unwilling to lose any more ground to the Viet Minh, the famous French general Jean-Marie de Latte de Tassigny arrived in Indochina and established a defensive line around Hanoi, effectively closing it off against the Gulf of Tonkin. This was the aptly named de Latte Line, composed of a network of 1,200 concrete blockhouses connected by roads capable of bearing 30-ton tanks. In January, Red Napoleon tried to breach the line at Vinh Yen, but got completely smashed upon launching a head-on assault with his 308th Division. Dulat answered this reckless charge with airstrikes and napalm, 
killing as many as 1,600 enemy troops and wounding a further 6,000, according to French estimates. This battle marked the end of the 1951 good times for Red Napoleon, who suffered defeat after defeat testing the De Latte defenses. The war was not over though, far from it. In January 1952, General De Latte left Indochina with cancer, to which he succumbed soon after, and Red Napoleon became emboldened, spreading through most of the Tonkin region. The French, now commanded by General Raoul Salan, had to make a big play, or Red Napoleon would become too powerful to stop. But we'll save that chapter of the story for part three of this video, in which we'll reach the bloody conclusion of the First Indochina War. For now, did you know that the First Indochina War was such a convoluted mess, with all sorts of foreign powers supplying the Viet Minh and the French? Did you know that Japanese soldiers stayed behind after Imperial Japan surrender to fight in Indochina? Can you expand on anything we covered in this video? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below.